<coughs> the fact that atheists have to confront is a terrible one. The scientific method is, by definition, supposedly disinterested and neutral. So, if you rely on science to tell you how to live your life, where do you look for moral guidance? Natural selection and survival of the fittest are the only moral imperatives that can be adduced from Darwinism. Unsurprisingly, not many atheists fancy that approach to morality. A tentative morality is also what we find in Richard Dawkins' latest entertaining excursion into religion bashing, the God Delusion. In it, Dawkins kindly comes up with his own new set of Ten Commandments. You have to say, they lack a certain rigour. You uh, replace the Ten Commandments with your own Ten Commandments, which I have to say look rather wishy-washy, here today, gone tomorrow. Isn't the great thing about religion that it has given us a longevity of moral behaviour? Well, I'm astonished you should think that was a good thing, I mean, because, because you actually look at, at, the, at the morality that comes out of the Old Testament, everybody's appalled by it, I mean, just about everybody's appalled by it. The here today, gone tomorrow thing, I actually rather agree with that, and that's one of the points I'm trying to make, that there is what I call a, a steadily shifting moral zeitgeist. Well, this might sound well and good in principle, but the track record of societies that have done away with the moral certitudes of religion is far from ideal. Back in the 18th century, a group of French revolutionaries, the Jacobins, did away with Christianity and sought to build a society based on rational thought. It ended in extreme violence. Well, the first attempt to create a society consciously without God was made by the Jacobins in France in the 1790s with their cult of reason. It was part of a broader desire to sort of purify society. I mean, these were people sort of deadly moralists, as it were, and, um, you know, in order to implement their moral vision on Earth, uh, they essentially tried to destroy Christianity. The Jacobins' moral position left them in no doubt as to what to do with their ideological enemies. In Western France alone, they killed about a quarter of a million people who had attempted to adhere to the old religion. The Jacobins weren't having this. They just slaughtered them. The Jacobins were not unique. Burley points out that societies which have rejected God have not escaped mankind's violent nature. I think if you subtract God and you subtract the notion of an afterlife, then there is a real risk, particularly in the political utopianisms, uh, which we saw which was so deadly in the 20th century, um, there's a real risk that you will attempt to create heaven on earth, go for a quick fix in the here and now, to have the arrogant illusion that you can remake man and woman into some sort of new being, and that invariably results in hell for ordinary people. This is Vladimir Nikiforov, a Catholic priest who is chaplain at Royal Holloway College. He lived through this very same kind of hell in his Russian homeland, which was then a Marxist utopia based on reason. In 1974, Vladimir was drawn to God and became a Christian. Unfortunately for him, this put him on the wrong side of the communist state. I was secretly ordained priest in an um, organized community, also a cl clandestine community in Moscow. Um, that was in violation of the state laws. Atheism has been an integral part of all communist states. The party demanded atheism in its rules. You can't be a party member if you're a member of any religion, actually. Do you think that that secularism can be as brutal as religious fundamentalism? Well, it has been. Going back to the communist state, when the state wanted to exterminate religious groups, it did that with much cruelty. So if we are talking about the um, crimes of militant secularism, the list can be very, very, very long. F fascism, communism, they were secular ideologies, basically. And look what they did. Uh, so 
in this case, who is talking? We, all, we are all uh, ideologists or religions. We all have criminal record in the past, and we should be humble about that, I suppose. Atheists don't go out to kill for other people's beliefs. Forgive me for, for mentioning Hitler, Stalin, Catholic. Mao. No, they weren't. Um, Stalin killed 20 million people. Yeah, but he was a Confucian. Oh, come on. That is... <laughs> that is wriggling of, of, the, of yeah. the most ludicrous kind. Yeah, but they so it was an atheistic but, system. Yeah, but they don't go out to kill on, in the name of atheism. That's really the point. I think it really is incidental that um, Stalin was an atheist. Uh, Stalin didn't do his dreadful deeds in the name of atheism. He did them in the name of well, a kind of Marxism. But, but surely that's the crucial point, that once one particular set of values has been removed, one way of living, uh, another one has to fill its place. Well, We're human beings right. and that's what we do. Yes, well, is there a sort of vacuum which needs to be filled when, when religion goes? Um, th that is arguable. It is possible that, that humans are so weak that they actually do need something like a religion. And if you sweep away Christianity, what you're going to get is something like Stalinist Marxism. The events of the last century should have taught us that countries which adopt secular ideologies can reach heights of cruelty, bigotry and repression which had hitherto been unimaginable. The point being that once you get rid of the religion, you don't get rid of the bigotry and the violence. To me, it is clear that a society built on science and reason will not automatically result in the utopian vision which atheists dream of. Because when you take God out of the equation, you've still got the problem of human nature. That's not religion. It's not anti-religion. It's not politics that's the problem. It's human nature itself. That things that inspire us, that we feel are really, really important, may make us do some very, very good things. But on the other hand, they make us do some very bad things as well. Atheists have become terribly preoccupied with destroying God and religion. And it's the absolute certitude with which they do this and the contempt sprayed upon those who fail to share their disbelief that worries me a little bit. History has shown us that it's not religion so much that's a problem, but any system of thought which insists that one group of people are inviolably in the right, whereas the others are in the wrong and thus must somehow be punished. The true scientific position, of course, is that there may be a God. And there may not be a God. Why can't we leave it at that?